Hi y'all, welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. I'm Corey Ashton here at Webtegrity getting ready to walk you through uh, basically how to do anything with CSS regarding your background. Whether it's the whole background on your entire website or perhaps a section on your website and you want to affect either the background color or perhaps even add an image behind the scenes, or not behind the scenes completely, but behind your content. How do you set a background image? How do you change background color? That's what we're getting into today. So here we go. Let's uh, slide me kind of out of the way here. Actually, I'm going to move me off screen for a second because what I want you to pay attention to is the fact that there's a little bit of a, an off color here. See, see my white uh, background that I've got here? You've got a little bit of an off white color happening back here. What if inside of this theme I wanted to put an image that kind of um, peeked out, you know, peeked out in that area? How would I do that? Some theme authors are amazingly kind and they will give you an area in your dashboard under your appearance area that possibly affects the background or perhaps inside of their theme options. Uh, you might be able to go in there and um, manipulate how you affect the background of your entire website. This particular author did allow me to do that. So what you want to do is go in and upload a background image to your media library so that it's here and available for you to use. Uh, and then, of course, this is different theme to theme to theme. Different authors will have this in different areas, but a kind author will allow you to add an, a background image. So you would select an image from your media library since you've already uploaded that. This is my image here. I said choose image. And wonderfully, you can already see it pop in back there. If I scroll down, this particular author again allowed me to have some wonderful settings in here. I do not want to repeat this image because it's really big. You might, if you have a small, tiny little image that creates a pattern, you might be able to set it to tile and it would tile all the way across your website really beautifully. Do you want the position to be left, center, or right? You can always play around with these settings and see kind of how things sit on the page. Um, and do you want it to scroll with the page or do you do want it to be fixed? I'm going to choose fixed and I'm going to go ahead and click save and publish so that when I come back to the front side of my website and click refresh, you'll see now that that image sits back here and that this gray area is gone. And as I scroll my page, the image sits fixed on the page, the back of the page. How nice is that? That's pretty great. But, dun dun dun, what if your author does not allow you accessibility like that? How do you do that without um, this really great author's kindness? Um, I'm going to show you how to do it via CSS. So, um, as you know, if you've been watching any of my videos, every single theme has the editor area, so appearance editor, and you get to see the CSS box here, uh, the file rather that your author has coded to affect everything on your website, right? However, I've always shared with you, don't make any changes inside of here because anytime you go to update your theme, you will lose all of these wonderful uh, changes that you've applied to your website. So the workaround for that is to either use a custom CSS plugin or if your author was kind, uh, they might have given you something that looks like this, which is a custom CSS box inside of your theme. So more than likely it's empty unless you've already been adding code and these are the codes that I've added so that anytime I click update on my theme, these are the things that still affect my site and my, my customization changes are intact. Uh, well, I want to be able to change, uh, let me refresh this because I already removed that image. I want to be able to change the background color. As many of you know, I work on um, Firefox and that's my browser choice and I use Firebug um, to do selecting elements. So that's what I just did. I engaged Firebug and I'm going to click on the selector element here and go to the back of my page back here and try to figure out what portion of this website has that gray color on it. And very typically it is the body tag. So let me slide this over a little bit. I want you to be able to see the background still. Look over on this right side here. This is the CSS that is affecting the area that I am working on right now. You see right away that it says background dash color and it gives me this F2, 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 which is in fact that little color that we have back there. And we can play around with this just by simply clicking the on and off or the delete icon right there just to see if that is in fact the correct spot. 
brilliant it is. So if I wanted to change that color, some random color, whatever color we wanted it to be, let's say I want to change it to some crazy looking red. I could play in this area and be sure I'm affecting the right spot. Once I figure out the exact um, CSS element I want to manipulate, I know that I'm going for body here, right? So I can go into my custom style sheet and overwrite anything I want to affect this CSS. So I'm going to slide down here and I'm just going to type in body, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and we're going to use that same um, element tag here, background color, colon, and we're going to add in the hashtag with the uh, whatever you know color code you want there. And of course, you have to close it there with a semicolon. And we're going to click Save Options. Now, when you go to the front side of your website, you should have a red background. Whew, that's bright and painful, isn't it? Bright and painful. Um, the other, another really cool tool that I use inside of Firefox is the Colorzilla eyedropper. So I can go on my screen and select absolutely any color um, that's on my screen. So I'm going to actually grab this really cool kind of mustardy color here and see, see if I can go plug that in um, and maybe not have such a bright red craziness going on. Let's drop in that color code right there. I just simply use that tool to grab the color code to make that mustardy color. Uh, appear behind the scenes in a background color. Check that out. How fun is that? So the the great thing about um, the great thing about the background dash color option inside of your CSS, you can affect any area on your website. It doesn't just have to be the background of your entire website. It could be the background color of your sidebar. It could be the background color of your header or your footer area. Maybe you want to change it from this dark gray to a lighter gray. You can just use a selector tool to figure out how the author coded that whole section. And it's the footer area. And if you notice here, if I slide this over, see footer background. Look at this dark color here, right? That's how they're manipulating that color. I can back that out and drop in that uh, mustardy color and look at that I've completely changed that footer area now and overridden what the original author had coded so if if an author is not kind to you and allowing um, you to have kind of a WYSIWYG environment where you can go in there and select easily the colors for all these sections there is a way to override it using a custom CSS box or a child theme with a custom CSS file so yay, very cool and fun times there. I'm going to go ahead and take this color off because that's not how I'm going to leave my website. But in doing that, why don't I just show you really quickly what if I wanted to use an image like we did originally. And again, your author doesn't allow you to code it um, just by choosing you know, from a, a WYSIWYG choose your image type environment. What if I just wanted to use this and say background image? And now I'm going to drop in the file of uh, where that sits on my server, right? That same image. So I'm just going to say URL, and that, that means link, basically, right? I'm just going to write a little bit of code here for a second. Uh, dot com forward slash WP content forward slash uploads forward slash 2015 forward slash 02 forward slash code poetry. 2060. I don't have this memorized, FYI. I'm, I'm actually seeing this off screen for a second. But you want to put in quote, it's a single quote, remember that, and a regular parentheses, all right? So that should give me now. And what you can do to get that big long URL is if you have it inside of your media library, let's open up an, another tab here really quickly. Um, if you've got that image inside of your media library, you would just click on it and you can go get that long URL right there grab that and go back to your theme options and and drop in that long URL alright and we'll click Save Options now if we go back to the front side of our website and click refresh that mustard color should be gone now and hopefully if I coded that correctly you're gonna have a background image back there ah brilliant there it is there's our background image sadly though it's gonna repeat and we don't want it to do that. So there's a little bit of extra code that you would have to drop in in order to get that same effect that the um, author uh, allowed us to do easily initially. Let me close that tab. Uh, you would want to add a few more lines that look something like this. I'm going to copy and paste these in here for you to see really quickly. 
I'm just going to put that in the same element. Again, affecting the, the body area of the website. I've got a background image. There's the link of where that image sits on my server. And I'm going to tell it background repeat, no repeat. Background attachment, I want it to be fixed or stay still as people scroll. And I want the background position to be centered on the page, all right? So I'm going to save that option, come back here to the front side of my website, um, and I'm going to go ahead and click refresh so I can see the most recent view. And now hopefully it's not going to repeat. Um, it should be centered beautifully now and uh, not tile, of course, and it should hold perfectly still as I sc scroll down the page, which it does. How cool is that? Fun, fun, fun. All right, y'all, if y'all have any questions about CSS stuff, I have one more video left in this series next week. We're going to go deep into some serious nerdy stuff when it comes to CSS. Please be sure to tweet me if you have any questions, at Corey Ashton, or you can do at Webtegrity. I'll put the information below in the, in the description box. And if you're local, check out our local meetup group. We have all sorts of free resources there. I'll put that link down below. Hope to see y'all next WordPress Wednesday. Bye-bye, y'all.